Hello everyone, I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. We are back with our weekly get together where we discuss all things golf carts. How we go over some questions and see if we can answer some people's questions, see if we can save them some money. Uh, this is Thursday, September the 1st, and we are live right now. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. So if you're watching me at, we're a little early today. We're gonna, we're changing things up a little bit. Uh, we're at 10.30 Central Time. Uh, live on Facebook and YouTube where I'm going to do a short session today and then I'll be back later on uh, at the regular regular time which is 12 noon central time and we'll do another short session let's see this is episode 51 this will be the 51st time and I am a member of the gearheads on demand service that we offer at golf cart garage gearheads on demand is a service that we offer where you can actually schedule an appointment with me and I'll call you and we can discuss uh, whatever your issue is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I can just give you a phone call or you can actually schedule a video session if you, you feel like I need to see something that in order to help you. It, sometimes it helps. You can schedule a video session where I'll send a link to your phone and all you do is you click the link at the time that you scheduled for. It, it'll show up on your phone automatically, the link will, and then I can look through your camera on your phone and see what you're, see what you're talking about. Sometimes that helps. Uh, let's see. That looks like about it for the opening. So let's get into the regular questions. Um, we may have some people in the live chat show up. I, I will be checking on that. And uh, you feel free. Feel free if you're watching or you're in the live chat, feel free to ask a question or say something. Let's get to the regular questions here. The garage is now open, so we might as well get started. Just bought a 2013 EasyGo TXT 36 volt and want to install a master battery disconnect. What do you advise? Well, you can do that. I mean, you you could put a master battery disconnect anywhere in 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 between any of your big power cables, like a stock the stock wire size on the big power cables on a 36 volt EasyGo is six gauge cables. So you could put a battery disconnect anywhere in there, but I, I guess my question would be, why do you think you need that? Because because the main solenoid is actually a master disconnect. But if you if you have another reason and you wanted to put a master disconnect somewhere, then just my advice would be just to get a big one, like a big one for a boat. You know, like a some marine uh, applications use a big battery disconnect in a in the big fishing boats and everything. You you get one of those because you're going to have all your amps is going to be going through that device. So if if you insist on getting a battery uh, disconnect and get a big one as it would be my advice it'd be a, it needs to be this high amp rating as you can find let's see number two I recently bought a Yamaha golf cart it came with the rear facing seats where the clubs would normally go I removed the seat and am trying to find the original basket and club holder it is more difficult than I thought it would be. Any help would be appreciated. Uh, it, depending on how old, the, I didn't look up the serial number, so I didn't see how old your golf cart is. But uh, depending on how old your cart is, I could see how that might be difficult. But you have to think about this. As many people that have installed that four passenger kit on the back of their golf cart that bag holder and everything has just been piling up at every golf cart shop across the world. So you might just not be looking in the right place. I'm, I'm saying it might, probably it might be difficult to find a new one, but I bet it would be easy to find a used one. And the golf cart shop may have they may be throwing those away. They may be throwing them in the trash can. So I would call golf cart shops and see if they have a takeoff, you know, for your particular year. Let's see, number three, easy go 48 volt golf cart can't achieve full speed. Just watched your YouTube video on charger troubleshooting. I recently replaced the cylinder in the car. Since then, I can't get the cart to go full speed. Any suggestions or what I should check? Okay, so you watched the video on charger troubleshooting. So that makes me think that maybe you were having 
suspicions about your charger not working correctly. So if that's the case and you don't think your car is reaching full speed, then I would want to see battery readings because that's that would be uh, that could easily cause your car not to reach full speed. You could have one battery that's dropping out or, or just low voltage overall. So I, I would want to clear that up and have, I'd want to clear up the part about you watching the charging uh, troubleshooting stuff too. Just to, and try your charger on another card if you can and just eliminate that as being the issue. All right, number four. Need some technical support. I have a 2014 Club Car Precedent 12 volt system has a constant draw on the batteries. The only 12 volt accessory on the card is the light kit. I installed a new voltage converter, I think you mean a voltage uh, reducer, and when I hook up the power wire to the battery, it still throws a big spark and everything turn, is turned off. Voltmeter measured between battery post and the converter power wire shows 48 volts going to the converter even when there is nothing turned on. Took the cart to local shop and they said this is normal. Does that sound right to you? This means the battery has a drain of on it 24 seven even when it is not being used. I see, I, I know what you're saying and when I had uh, when I was running my golf cart shop for those years, that is the reason it, there, there's going to be two answers and the, and the golf cart shop that said that that's normal, they, they're right. It is normal, but I didn't like it. I was like you, I didn't like it either. So anytime that I used a voltage reducer, anytime I had a car with a voltage reducer, I always put a switch. I always put a switch on the input side. So you, you got the input side, that's where the 48 volts going in. And then you have the output side where the 12 volt is coming out. Well, you're, you're going to have 48 volt coming in. And if you don't have your lights on, then there's nothing putting a drain on it on the output side. That's where, you're, that's where you'd be wanting your drain. But you still have power going to the reducer itself. And just to be assured, just to make myself feel better, I always put a switch on one of the wires on the input side so that way you're turning the converter the, the the reducer off you're turning the voltage reducer completely off i mean that way you could leave your light switch on and hit the switch to turn your converter off and your lights go out and then you know that there is no parasitic drain anywhere because you just cut the feed going into the device that's what i did that's what i always did i just felt better about it that way number five I have two carts that have stopped running, 2007 precedent. With run tow switch on, rolled the carts back and forth and there is no alarm sound or resistance. I wonder if replacing a controller from a running cart would be valid. Well, let's, let's just talk about what normal operation was because I don't really understand what you mean by with the run tow switch in that position because uh, with the run tow switch in the run position this would be normal if you pushed your cart you should feel resistance uh, if you was going forward it, you should feel the cart pushing back and, and it will not free wheel and if you pushed it backwards it, and, and a buzzer would come on you, you, you would hear the buzzer come on but resistance in a buzzer if the switch is in the run position if it's in the toe position it should free wheel and no buzzer come on that would be normal if you're in the run position and you're you're able to push it in free wheel with it in run then it could be a couple of things it, it could be the controller like you said and if you have access to a controller the, to swap it out real quick, that would be a real good idea. But the first thing I would say, would, it probably would be speed sensor. But since your car is not running, uh, see the, the car would run a little bit, or the ones that I have seen would run if the speed sensor was bad. It's just that they would go really, really, really slow. So if yours is not running, then it definitely could be the controller and I'd be swapping it out just to, just to verify, just like what you were thinking of doing. Let's see here, we're gonna Stop on number six. So I'm gonna go check over here. Madeline Perez. What's up, Madeline? I know you. 
Love to watch these Q&A sessions with Tim. Well, thank you very much. Madeline is a part of our amazing customer service team that we have at Golf Cart Garage. So if you ever call Golf Cart Garage, make sure you ask for Madeline. Let's see. Looks like we're cool on YouTube. Number six. My cart has long delay or don't go at all when you start. I have a new battery, but I noticed the reverse buzzer doesn't work. Okay. Since you said you have a new battery, singular, I'm going to assume that we're talking about a gas cart. Uh, this is a, I know I've said this many times, on a gas cart, you need to figure out how to crank it in neutral. A lot of times you can see what's going on. You can see the hesitation because you can see if you're, what you need to do, raise your seat, crank it in neutral, and watch your starter generator. Figure out where your starter generator is. It's got a, it's got a belt around it, around a pulley that, that turns your motor over when you touch the accelerator pedal with your foot. So watch that starter generator when you touch that accelerator pedal with your foot and see if, if it's instantaneously moving or if there's a delay before it starts trying to rotate. Because a lot of times it tries to rotate, but it'll spin inside the belt for a split second or two, and then the belt will catch and then the motor will turn over. But if, it's, if, you're, if you don't see it immediately turn or try to jerk when you hit the accelerator pedal, then I would be backing up in the system and maybe looking at your accelerator pedal stop switch and, and you know and checking that out let's see not six let's do number seven this is from Jim forward and reverse switch is about a year old 2005 easy go TXT electric the switch is very stiff to move with the hand lever when moved to forward position, the car will move. When moved to reverse position, it takes several times of back and forth with the hand lever, and it will finally connect and move in reverse. I don't see any burnt or hot marks on the switch. Someone said spray it down with WD-40, but I'm afraid to do that. I can understand why you're uh, afraid to do that because WD-40 is flammable. I don't know if everybody, I, I just, I kind of assume everybody knew that, but WD-40 is flammable. You don't believe me, spray it in some fire and it'll show you real quick that it's flammable. Uh, I have done that. I have put WD-40 in a forward and reverse switch, but the first thing that you should try to do, well, try to use some other type of lubricant. Try to use some kind of non-flammable electrical lubricant. There's all kinds of different uh, types of electrical lubricants that could be used that are not flammable. Uh, but also, you need to, I need to point this out. There's a big nut on the back of that forward and reverse switch you can loosen up, and that will, that will help. But you do, it, it does help to lube them also. So find you some electrical lube that's not flammable, and then loose if that do, if that doesn't help and fix your problem completely then loosen up that nut on the back and get that forward and reverse switch exactly how easy you want it to be and see if it corrects your uh your not going in reverse issue also plus there's a there's a two micro switches on there too you need to look at make sure they're not sticking let's see just checking out Facebook and YouTube just to make sure we're still good. Let's see, number eight. Easy go gas fuel system problems. I have an easy go gas workhorse 2004. It starts and runs okay, but seems to start choking down and will only run at about half power when it warms up. Uh, I, mean, I guess my first question would be, are you having any trouble with your battery staying charged? Is your battery going dead? And I know that sounds like an odd question, but I have a reason for asking that. I have seen voltage regulator go out in easy goes with your motor, 
with the same motor you have in that workhorse. And what it will do is not only will it cause the the battery to go dead and continue to have to be charged manually and then the car crank up and run fine, but as the car is running, it will actually drain voltage out of the battery. And what happens when that starts happening is that you start losing spark. Because as your car is warming up and you're and you're losing power, you're either losing spark, fuel, or compression. It's very it's very unlikely that you're losing compression. You know, as if you got oil in your car and you and you're and you're driving, so you're either losing fuel or you're losing spark, one or the other, as it warms up. Uh, if you're losing spark, it would be more of a, I would think that it would be more of a spit and sputter kind of thing, but the especially as it gets worse and worse and worse, it would start spitting and sputtering if you were losing spark. So that's why I would want to know, I want to eliminate the, the uh, voltage regulators being the issue first. And if that's not it, then it turns out it sounds like you might be losing fuel somewhere. So I don't know if your, your fuel pump is in a, is a old or is it, you got some cracked fuel lines and is it, as the motor gets hot, some of those fuel lines some of those cracks get larger and you don't have as much pressure going to your fuel pump. It, it could be a number of things. Uh, but my first would be, I'd check the, make sure that the battery is charging correctly. And then when it gets hot and starts losing uh, power, take the fuel off, take the fuel line off and see if it's still pumping the same amount of fuel that it was when it was cold. That would be two things that, I, that I'd compare it to. Let's see. And we're good there. Facebook is good. Number nine. This is going to be the last regular question for this session for, for episode 51. But like I said, I will be coming back in a little while and probably about an hour and I will go over a whole another session with we'll having we're going to do episode 52 today and at 12 o'clock noon central time. Number nine is I live in the villages and notice that some mornings the golf cart engine will not start forward or reverse with one push of the gas pedal. I do not hear any type of click. Usually the second push of the gas pedal will start it. I removed the accelerator switch and pushing in the button feels like it works and it's rubber boot looked good. Suggestions. Well, I would want to do like I had mentioned before on one of the previous questions. I would want you to look at the starter generator while you touch the accelerator pedal. So in other words, you need to raise a seat, crank the car, put it in neutral and touch accelerator and watch the starter generator and see if it moved or not when you hit it that first time. If, if it's not moving, then I would go back to the, accel to, the, uh, to the accelerator switch, but I wouldn't just fill up it because it's, it's an on-off switch and it, it could be losing continuity or it could be have intermittent continuity. So you need to just do a continuity test on it with a voltmeter, but you gotta disconnect it. Since you've already removed it, I'm assuming you know how to, to disconnect it and remove it and get it out of the golf cart. You just definitely got to disconnect the wires from it. And then look up continuity test and do a continuity test with an actual voltmeter or an ohm meter to do a continuity test on that voltmeter. All it is is an on-off switch. A simple continuity test will test for on-off operation. Then you can sit there and push that button and with your, your, your finger and watch the, the voltmeter and see if you ever push the button and it faults on you. You know, if you ever push it and it doesn't have continuity, that's what I would be checking next. Let's see. It looks like we're good. Uh, don't forget, I am Tim. Uh, I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service. You can schedule a phone call with me uh, just by clicking the link in the description. If you're interested in doing that, you can schedule an appointment with me where I will call you and I'll talk with you one-on-one -on -one about your golf cart issue. Uh, and you can also schedule, if you choose to, if you think it's necessary, you can schedule a video and I will send a link to your phone. Uh, to You click the link, takes you to the, uh, the camera opens up, I can see what you're pointing at and then I might be able to help you. But like I said, if you're interested in that, if you're interested in utilizing that service, 
click the link in the description. That will take you to the scheduling page and you fill out a little bit of information and it's all automatic and, and I'll be there. Other than that, let's see. The winners for the Golf Cart Extreme Makeover Season 2 have been announced. There's already a video where they were interviewed. They won like $3,000 in store credit to, to do their own Extreme Golf Cart Makeover themselves. So go check that out. Go to Golf Cart Garage. Look for this logo. Click on that. Get more information on all that. You can watch the videos about the winners. And uh, we'll be doing another season for sure. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen, but it, it was very, very successful, and we'll, we're going to be doing that again. So anyway, it looks like that's going to be about it for me. Let's look at Facebook and YouTube one more time. No, it looks like we're good there. All right. Well, I will be back in a couple of hours or an hour or so uh, to do episode 52. The garage is now closed.